Funding for the interview show with Mark Baser is provided by Lifeway, makers of Lifeway Kefir and other probiotic products, like their Kefir Cups, non-dairy sparkling elixir, and supplements. Lifeway, love your guts. Visit LifewayKefir.com. Lagunitas, beer speaks, people mumble, except on the interview show. And Field Notes, vintage styled, made in the USA, pocket notebooks, journals, and stationary products. Visit FieldNotesBrand.com. My first guest is an actor and a playwright. He's won a Pulitzer and a Tony Award. Here is Tracy Letts. I, I just saw your play, uh, Linda Vista. I saw you there. Yes. I saw you at my play. Yes, I, saw I watched you. you watching it the well, whole that, time. That, and, <laughs> and, and, and that made me nervous because once I knew that you were watching me, I was like, don't laugh too hard. You're laughing, but he's going to see it. I don't want to affect I saw it. I could tell the difference yeah. between when you were really laughing and fake laughing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was laughing throughout. Like right now, am I really laughing or no, am I fake is, laughing? No, this is fake. Just like there there's no, nothing in the cup. Very good. <laughs> um, what do you think about when you're watching people watch your play? Uh, what I think about is I'm trying to see if they're confused. I'm try I hear the play through their ears, and I, I hear those moments where they don't understand what's going on. You can, after a while, you begin to, you can hear the question marks over their heads, and you can see those moments where they just don't know what's going on. Uh, certainly, you can tell when jokes fall flat. Uh, you can tell when certain things you didn't think were funny are suddenly funny. Uh, but uh, so you're listening to the way the audience uh, hears the play and moves through the play. When I was watching Linda Vista, I thought, God, I, I can't wait to, to obviously talk to you about it. It's about a, a 50-year-old, self-absorbed white male. But then I was like, this is a trap. Because if we talk about it too much, we're doing exactly what that dude is. We're just talking about the plight of the middle-aged white male, right? and somebody will say, shut up. Yeah, sure. You know, I think with the 50-year-old white male, there's the presumption that anybody gives a shit what you're saying, yeah. that, that anybody cares about your opinion. It's like your opinion actually has no more or less validity than anybody else's, and we don't actually need to know your stance on everything. <laughs> That's the trap. If I give my opinion of that, I am... I am who gives Who gives yeah, that's right. That's right. So I'm just going to say, I think it's great. Thanks. I think it's great. Thanks very much. Yeah. Uh, what's 50? What 50 seems to be, this guy is 50. He's yeah. not doing that great. He's in a divorce. He's going through a very bad divorce. He's moved yeah. into a pretty crappy apartment. Yeah. Uh, his son, who's like 13, isn't really talking to him. 50 seems like the time when either that happens or you're doing real well but you're like, I could lose this at any moment. Like, what's, what's good about, because I'm looking at that. I'm looking at 50, I can see it. What's good about it? Well, almost everything is good about it. Okay. Uh, I, think, I think actually, I think for me, life tends to get better as you go along. Uh, the physical degradation is a drag. Yeah. Uh, you look well, though. You look well. Thank you very much. Yeah. So do you. Thank you. Well, I'm only 43. <laughs> uh, all, all the death is a drag. You know, all the people you know and love who die, that's a drag. But uh, everything else is actually much better. You know, the, the, the truth is that the character, uh, though a lot of his point of view comes from me, he's also based on a lot of friends of mine who find themselves at this point in their lives kind of stuck. Uh, yeah. And... Uh, you know, when you hit 50, that you're looking at the last, well, I don't want to put a number on it, but the last stretch, you, you, can, you can see it somewhere yeah. out there. And uh, it's a little scary. It's a scary place to be. It, can be. it can be quite scary. But here's the thing, and you mentioned it, as you get older, yes, come on in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> life does seem to get better. And what, like, what were you like, did you enjoy being a child? Like, yeah, sure, yeah. But, but, but more than being an adult? No. Right. <laughs> yeah, no. no I, but I, but I, I some like people. Being a child. Yeah, but, but adulthood seems to be a time when you can do what you want for the most part. Yeah. You are comfortable in yourself for the most part. Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay. And, <laughs> and if somebody doesn't want to hang out with you, you can deal with that. 
Whereas oh, a yeah. kid is spent, I mean, I don't know about you, but like being a child, like I had a great childhood. My parents will disagree with everything I say right now, but it was uncomfortable a lot of the time. All right, sure. So, but being a teenager totally sucked, right? The, yeah, there the was worst. nothing good about nothing, being a teenager. Nothing, nothing. And and the twenties are your twenties are totally overrated. The twenties, I feel like I I napped the entire twenties right. away, <laughs> and then think I could have done, I could have done things. Oh, oh. This yeah. set would have been designed ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I just I drank and did a lot of drugs. That was my twenties. Was mainly drinking and drugs. Were you writing Were you writing plays in your twenties? Uh, I guess I wrote my first one at twenty eight. Something like that. So what were we, other than what you just said you were doing, what were you doing in your 20s? Acting in storefront theaters here in Chicago and drinking and drugging and running around. And when did you yeah. say, stop drinking and drugging, start writing plays? Uh, I actually wrote my first play and got sober about three weeks later after the show premiered no at way. the age of 28, yeah. Why did, those, why did they coincide? I don't know. I guess there was something that was, well, there are a lot of reasons for that, which I don't I don't need to turn this into an AA meeting. There, uh, there were a lot of reasons for that, but I guess I realized that writing a play was, the, the play I wrote, nobody else would ever write the play that I wrote. I'm the only one who could write that play. Yeah. But everybody else could uh, kill themselves drinking. There's nothing particularly special about that. You didn't so. do it in a unique way. Right, There's no, yeah. there is no unique way. When you, for each, does each play that you write, when you wrote August of Sage County, afterwards you said, look it, I was haunted by these events all my life. I had to write it. Is that true of every play? Is it true of Linda Vista? Is it true of The Minutes that's a new play? Is it, I, I have to get this out? It doesn't always seem true. It's only in retrospect sometimes and I look back and I say oh that's what that was about that's why I needed to tell that story that's what I had to get out in August I knew I needed to tell it I it, it was the the events of my life from when I was 10 years old and I wrote the play at I don't know 40 something like that and so yeah it, in fact I, I remember calling my dad to talk to him about uh, some of the events uh, surrounding my grandfather's suicide when I was 10 years old and I called him to just get some details and go over the story with him. I thought maybe it would upset my mom to talk to her about it because it was her father who killed himself. And I thought, I'm not going to bother her with it. I'll talk to Dad. And I, I told Dad I was writing this play, and, then I, and so I asked him some questions about the time, and the sheriff, the cops, all, all that, you know, just detail-oriented stuff. And at some point he said to me, why are you writing about this? What is, why would you possibly want to write about this? And I said, well, Dad, you know, I was 10 years old, it was a big deal, I, I, I had nightmares, it's, uh, it affected our family, it affected our lives for so many years, I've, uh, this, this event has haunted me for 30 years. And he said, it has? <laughs> like it had never but occurred But hadn't it haunted him? him? Well, yeah, but uh, you know. But you were I, 10, so he thought I think he thought a 10 year old, you. he thought, I don't know what he thought. Yeah. He, did, he didn't think it was as impactful as it was. Did you, so a play like Linda Vista, Yeah. that's not, that dude is not you. No. You've, you've kind of come out the other side. I made up a dude. Yeah. yeah. That's, which is something that people do when they write. That's <laughs> they right. They always write about them on, their own self. That's right. Well, sometimes you write about different versions of yourself. That's the way I look at it. Like that guy is a guy I might have been. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Is He's it? a guy I might have been had I not made certain changes in my life along the way. He's, for me, kind of a cautionary tale. You know, uh, you also, if you can be honest with yourself when you're writing a character and you say, these are some of the terrible things I've done in my life, these are, these are some of my flaws, and here they are out for the world to see, and guess what? You're just as flawed as I am. Chances are you're more flawed than me. I mean, you, personally. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you know, the, here's, an ex here's an opportunity for you to come in and see a character portrayed warts and all that you identify with. And that's one of the great things about Linda Vista, too. I'm, I'm, I'm see well, I talked about listening to the audience listen to the show. Uh, you hear people as they're he hearing some of the bad behavior that starts to take place, and they, they align themselves with different characters at different points. And they'll switch with, even within the course of a scene. They say, oh, I've been that guy. Oh, but wait, I've been that person, too. I've been, I've been the one breaking somebody's heart, and I've been the one getting my heart broken. At the, at the end of... At the beginning of the intermission, I turned to my wife and I said, he's a good dude. 
And then afterwards, I was like, oh, maybe it wasn't such a good dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I totally changed my mind about him. Right, yeah. Um, he's a tricky dude. He's, he's a, a tricky dude. He's a slippery He's dude. exhausting. Yeah. But, yeah. but every, yes. isn't everybody exhausting if you spend enough time well, with them? that's absolutely true. Yeah. We thought about putting on the poster, Linda Vista, you'll be exhausted. <laughs> uh, we also thought we, uh, for a long time, you know, everybody's pissed off. Everybody's pissed off all the time. I don't know if you've noticed this, but everybody's yeah. pissed off all the time. Yeah. So there's, there's nudity and frank depictions of sex. I think yeah. that's the way we describe it on, yeah. uh, on the poster. Do you have to tell people in advance so they might not We weren't to... going to. Now yeah. we're telling people in advance. You, you don't want to tell people in advance because you don't want to lure the people who are coming just for that that's reason. Right. <laughs> there are, but I find there are, I mean, if you are, if you want to see sex, you can do it in another way than spend 50 bucks on a play ticket at Steppenwolf. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So we, even though we warn people about it, some people are pissed off about the sex. Some people are what pissed off. What do they off. say? What do they there's, say? There's, there's naked sex. There's yeah. naked sex on stage. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, we told you that before yeah. you came in, but the, we didn't tell the them poster. strongly enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, they get pissed off because the music's too loud. They get pissed off because the guy's in the They get pissed off because the guy's not a big enough. Well, everybody gets pissed <laughs> off about something. So what we finally so decided. So you've got to fine tune the amount of asshole. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we decided the poster was going to say, Linda Vista, just don't come. <laughs> <laughs> we told you. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got a, a, another, another play. Uh, it's, it's about politics, right? It's, it's it the, is. The minutes. It's called The Minutes. It's, it takes place in a city council meeting. Uh, it's 90 minutes long, uh, straight shot beginning to end of a city council meeting in a small, medium-sized town, fictional town. Yeah. Uh, I was writing it uh, before the election, and uh, then the election happened, and it, it was a job to just kind of keep my blinders on and keep writing the play I had set out to write and not turn it into a play about what the, yeah, the election we just went through, because yeah. it's not supposed to be specific to that. It's, I think it's more... Uh, are people going to watch it and say, oh, he was on, he was on top, he wanted to get in in there? Yeah, I think, uh, sure. I mean, but we relate a lot of what's going on right now yeah. to the election, right? You could put on the poster, not about the election. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, really, just don't come works for any place. <laughs> <laughs>